All right, Mr. Amine expert, so let me get this straight. Overstripping of amine is a myth. It doesn't make it corrosive. That's what you're trying to tell me, right? Yes, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Okay, well then explain to me how come uh, as our loadings dropped lower and lower and lower, we saw our iron content rise. We saw in our ultrasonic testing our metal getting thinner. If overstripping was not the cause of the corrosion, then what was? I will tell you what was. It had nothing to do directly with there being a lack of H2S in the amine. Now, a really low lean loading is a warning sign that something is not quite right with your amine. Amine shouldn't naturally regenerate to those ultra lean loadings. So what is it? What is going on? What is causing our low lean, low lean loadings and what is causing the corrosion? Stay tuned to this episode of the Experts Network to find out exactly why. Welcome to the Experts Network. Welcome back to the Experts Network. My name is Ben Spooner. I'm a process engineer with Amy and Experts, and today we are going to do part two on the topic that we started uh, two videos ago. We had Gerald Bomi's sulfur video in between the last amine one. We kind of alternate amine sulfur, amine sulfur, and plus whatever miscellaneous comes along. But in, in part one of this series, we discussed why overstripping of amine is not actually a corrosive activity and that leaving H2S in lean amine doesn't actually form a protective iron sulfide film. You will still form iron sulfides in the lean amine if you leave H2S in there, but all you form is this white, this black shoe polish. You don't form the pyrotite scale that you want. That's the protective type of iron sulfides. It requires more H2S and more temperature than we're gonna give it on the lean side. If you can't form an iron sulfide film on the lean side, and if overstripping is a big myth, then how do we explain that low lean loaded amines in a lot of cases correspond with corroded regenerators, corroded reboilers, foul lean rich exchangers, that sort of thing. Because a lot of plants, if they if they look at their data trend, they just they can trend that as the lean loading dropped, which normally just tends to happen over time. Lean loading got lean loading got lower and lower, all right, and the amine was blacker and blacker. Their filter change frequency went up. If they analyze that amine, they find high iron contents. The lower the uh, loading is, the higher the iron content. How do we explain this? Well. To truly understand what's going on in a corroded uh, regenerator and reboiler situation that has a low loaded amine, we need to have a good handle on what lean loading means, okay? And how do you get to a target lean loading? Now, our lean loading can be too high, or in some people's opinion, it can be too low. As an operator engineer, you need to understand how you get higher or lower lean loadings. Let's start very quickly on a high lean loading, which no plant wants, because a high lean loading means there's still quite a bit of H2S or CO2 in your lean amine. It's probably not gonna work very well in your absorber. It won't pick up more acid gases when it's already got acid gas in it. So some common reasons for high lean loading are going to be uh, probably not Number one is if you just don't have the right ratio or the, the correct amount of heat medium for the amount of amine flow. It's very easy to overwhelm these regenerators with too much amine and if you don't have enough steam flow going up, we just wind up quenching the steam back to water way down there in the bottom of the regenerator and you get very poor regeneration. Most of the amine just went down those trays or the packing of the regenerator, nothing happened to it until it got to the very bottom. We do all our regeneration uh, or whatever we do get at the bottom and a lot of times you're left with a high lean loading. Um, on one hand, that can also be a very, very problematic cause of corrosion of a, of a reboiler or regenerator is if you do all the regeneration down in that area. But that's not what we're here to talk about today, okay? So there's definitely corrosion related to a high lean loading. What we wanna to get to is corrosion related to low lean loading. But before we get into that, 
Uh, some other reasons for high lean loading, one would be is if you had foaming in the regenerator. When I mean foams, it doesn't absorb heat very well, so it doesn't reject the H2S and CO2 the way it should. Uh, the presence of a strong base in your aiming, so something stronger than aiming like uh, sodium or potassium are the most common ones. These high pH bases will bind onto H2S or CO2 so hard that you cannot regenerate them out of the aiming. It's basically a heat stable salt just on the basic side and you see it in your lab analysis you see the loading go up doesn't matter what you do to the aiming it, it, much much power to the reboilers you want you will never get the loading down is because you've permanently bonded uh acid gases into those strong bases uh we can also have problems with the lean rich exchanger so either a fouled lean rich exchanger which is going to kill our heat exchange that means that the rich aiming going into the tower is getting colder and colder all right, now what we are doing is we're using more and more steam that we generated in the reboiler just for the physical heating of the aiming, that sensible heat duty, and it means less heat is left over for that endothermic reaction to drive the acid uh, out of the aiming. So fouled lean rich exchanger can lead to high lean loadings. And furthermore, a leaking lean rich exchanger can lead to high lean loadings because uh, as, as the two amines go through this exchanger, they're supposed to cross paths and only exchange heat. Well, if there's a leak, what can happen is a higher pressure rich will spray into the lean. So the lean leaves the exchanger with, that, with all that H2S and, and CO2 in it. So that what gives us a high lean loading. Now let's look at what would give us a low lean loading. If we wanted to decrease the lean loading, if, if our lean loading was too high and we wanted to bring it down, the most common thing a plant would do is either put more heat medium or duty to the reboiler, so increase the hot oil flow or increase the hot oil temperature maybe, increase your steam rate if it's a steam powered reboiler, any of those will work, or decrease the aiming circulation rate. All right, let the existing steam that's in a regenerator do its job and heat everything up and regenerate it the way it should. So basically increasing that ratio of heat in the reboiler to aiming flow. Now, if you really want to decrease the lean loading, then we neutralize the aiming neutralize it by adding some phosphoric acid to the amine. This is a very common technique that formulated amines have done over the years. Back in since the mid 1980s, plants been doing this. Phosphoric acid plus MDEA is well known to achieve very low lean loadings. And it's what any of these formulated amines that you can buy nowadays for tail gas treatment units or acid gas enrichment is just MDEA plus a neutralizing agent such as phosphoric acid in there. Now, even if you don't add phosphoric acid into your amine, you can still achieve extremely low lean loadings. You can overstrip your amine if you form heat stable salts. Heat stable salts. This is a, a, a topic that has been beat to death in 2004. Ralph Whelan wrote a groundbreaking paper on the effect of heat stable salts on regeneration of amine. In our mind, it should have killed the idea of overstripping right then and there, but here we are uh, over 15 years later, people still think you can overstrip amine. It's not overstripping of amine that, that's happened that's giving you this low lean loading necessarily. It's the heat stable salts, okay? Heat stable salts. So. Think on that for a second, and any of you are out there that are blaming an overstripped amine on a corroded regenerator, dig up your historical amine analysis and see if you happen to have some heat stable salts that we can trend along with those loadings and with the iron content. What you're gonna see is that as the loadings drop, the heat stable salts went up. Okay, as heat stable salts go up, expect your iron content to go up with the amine. Probably the corrosion was from the heat stable salts, not the overstripping. Okay, more on this topic coming next video. Stay tuned to the Experts Network.